This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1049, How to Make Quantum Leaps Personally and Professionally, part one, by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that reads to you every single day of the year to help you optimize your life. Today's post being from Benjamin Hardy, one of the top writers on Medium. Before we get to the post, are you focusing on the most meaningful things in life? Take inspiration from Skagen watches and jewelry. Their Danish minimalist designs are guided by less is more. It's a good daily reminder for all of us. See how they do it at skagen.com. That's S-K-A-G-E-N.com. And get a special discount on your first purchase when you sign up for emails. Again, that's skagen, S-K-A-G-E-N.com. For now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. How to Make Quantum Leaps Personally and Professionally, Part 1, by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. In 1978, Ellen Langer, a Harvard psychologist, performed an important study. She gave house plans to two groups of nursing home residents. One group was told that they were responsible for keeping the plant alive and that they had autonomy in their daily schedule. The other group was told the staff would care for the plant and they were not given choices in their daily schedule. After 18 months, twice as many people in the group given responsibility for their plant and schedule were alive than the other group. Langer took this as evidence that the present biomedical model, which views the mind and body as separate, is wrong. In response, she conducted a study to further examine the mind's impact on the body. Counterclockwise. In 1981, Langer and a group of graduate students designed the interior of a building to reflect 1959. There was a black and white TV, old furniture, and magazines and books from the 1950s scattered about. This would be the home to a group of eight men all over 70 years old for the next five days. When these men arrived at the building, they were told they should not merely discuss this past era, but to act as if they actually were their prior selves 22 years ago. We have good reason to believe if you are successful at this, you will feel as you did in 1959, Langer told them. From that moment on, the study subjects were treated as if they were in their 50s rather than their 70s. Despite several being stooped over and having to use canes for walking, they were not aided in taking their belongings up the stairs. Take them up one shirt at a time if you have to, they were told. Their days were spent listening to radio shows, watching movies, and discussing sports and other quote-unquote current events from the period. They could not bring up any events that happened after 1959, and referred to themselves, their families, and their careers as they were in 1959. The goal of this study was not for these men to live in the past, but rather to mentally trigger the body to exhibit the energy and biological responses of a much younger person. By the end of the five days, these men demonstrated noticeable improvement in their hearing, eyesight, memory, dexterity, and appetite. Those who had arrived using canes and dependent on the help of their children left the building under their power and were carrying their own suitcases. By expecting these men to function independently and by engaging with them as individuals rather than old people, Langer and her students gave these men an opportunity to see themselves differently, which impacted them biologically. The roles you play in life determine your identity and behavior. Although Langer's counterclockwise study portrays the positive possibilities of redefining individual roles, other psychological research exposes a darker side. For example, the famous Stanford prison experiment conducted by Philip Zimbardo revealed that the roles people are in, in large measure, determine their identity and behavior. In the experiment, individuals were assigned to one of two roles, prison guards or inmates. Disturbingly, the experiment was forced to end premature because the subjects played their roles too well. Those playing guards ridiculed and tortured the inmates, whereas those playing inmates became docile and even hopeless. The aftermath of the experiment left several of the study's subjects psychologically traumatized. It's difficult to deny that the roles you play in your life dramatically impact who you are and how you act. Your personality is not a fixed and intrinsic entity. Rather, your personality and character are fluid and ever-changing based on the roles you play. Consider the experience of Heath Ledger, whose death many believe was due, at least in part, to his over-attachment to his role as the Joker in The Dark Knight. We are all actors on a stage. 
Quote, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. William Shakespeare. You and I, everyone, are all actors. We are all playing roles on different stages in varied contexts. In one situation, you may play the role of a musician, while in other roles, you may play a parent, a friend, a lover, a student, or a teacher. Each situation determines the role you play. However, most people have not consciously designed their circumstances, nor have they consciously determined the roles they will play. Most people fail to realize that they get to choose their stage, who they will be, and how they will act. They've not decided to write the story of their own lives, but have consigned the storytelling to someone or something outside of them. Rather than seeing their identity as flexible and malleable, most people believe, this is just the way I am, and see their identity as rigid. Seeing yourself more authentically. Your most authentic self is not who you currently are, but rather who you desire to become. You are the author of your life's narrative. You have power to determine the stages of life you will be on and the characters you will play. And even when unexpected challenges arise, you have the power of improvisation during which you can live congruent to your values, the essence of authenticity. Because you get to shape the environment and decide the roles you will play, you can make quantum leaps in your personal and professional development. The process is simple. Determine your goal, commit to your goal by leaping into situations that require you to live up to your goal, Determine the roles you will need to play in the various situations you create. Act the part until you become the part. Develop relationships with people who have your back and can help you achieve your goals. And repeat, but at higher levels with more stretching leaps. What is your goal? Quote, this is a fundamental irony of most people's lives. They don't quite know what they want to do with their lives, yet they are very active. Ryan Holiday. Most people are wandering through life like they wander on the internet, reactively scrolling their news feed and landing on the random pages that appear. They haven't determined what they want and thus they haven't consciously designed their environments. Rather, they adapt to and become the product of whatever environments they wander into. However, when you decide what you want, the universe conspires to make it happen. How? When you decide what you want, you set the stage. You get to create the plot, the setting, and the characters that will be in your story. Most importantly, you get to decide which characters, plural, you will play and how your story will unfold. Until you decide what you want, you won't be able to consciously shape your environments. And as a human being, you adapt to and evolve over time based on your environment. In order to consciously evolve, you must know who you want to become at your next stage. However, you don't wanna plan too far into the future. When you plan too far ahead, you put a cap on your potential. You begin to see your identity as fixed. When taking big leaps, you'll be opened up to new universes of possibilities. At every next level, your perception of your potential and possibilities will radically expand. As Leonardo DiCaprio has said, quote, every next level of your life will demand a different you, end quote. You have no clue what your potential is or who you can become. There is no cap. You are completely flexible and fluid. Your view of who you want to become will completely change. I have a friend, Greg, who is 41 years old. He successfully started and ran multiple businesses. 20 years ago, his plan was to get $10 million in the bank and retire by age 40. However, he's since achieved that goal and in due process has expanded his view of himself and his potential to contribute. He is actively pursuing goals and meaning beyond anything his 21-year-old self could ever conceive. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled How to Make Quantum Leaps Personally and Professionally by Benjamin Hardy of benjaminhardy.com. And thank you to Scoggin for sponsoring this episode. Did you know some of the happiest people on earth live in Denmark? Skagen is not only named after a Danish coastal town, but it's also inspired by the people who live there. Their Danish lifestyle focuses on what's meaningful, being part of a community, making time for relationships, and living in the moment. Skagen connects the dots between culture and design with minimalist watches and jewelry that reflect the less is more concept. I have a Skagen smartwatch. 
It tracks my heart rate, activity. It also has smartphone notifications, music control with storage, and a lot more. You can even make payments from it. It's a really beautiful watch. It also has customizable dials and magnetic mesh straps, interchangeable straps also. So come check it out, along with their other watches and jewelry. Visit skagen.com, that's S-K-A-G-E-N.com, to get a special discount on your first purchase when you sign up for emails. Again, that's Skagen, S-K-A-G-E-N.com. And that should do it for today's episode. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through. It really means a lot. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the Friday show tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.